New cards. Wait, there's a sapling. Sapling support. Okay. Moonlit Glenkeeper. When you summon an ephemeral ally, grant it plus one plus zero. And Nightfall summon a sapling. Wow. I'm guessing this does get buffed. But in my head, summons happen before card effects. So in my head, this should not get a buff. But um, I'm guessing it does. Because it doesn't say your ephemeral is plus one plus zero when I'm on board. It's a... Uh, it's a post-summon effect. And we've seen that um, the summon hits the board before this hits the board. Because if there's um, like a trap and this gets vulnerable before this. But I'm guessing they, they made it interact so that this actually gets the plus one. Otherwise it wouldn't make sense. So I'm just going to assume it does. That is so strong. That's pretty dang strong, dude. And it's a great blocker as well. Like, on defense this is really good. It's a prime removal as well, like 3 mana. 2-3, okay, it doesn't block Fearsome, but this does. And this removes units like it kills Misfortune. Imagine, you play this on 3, Misfortune's dead. That's such a high roll. That's insanely strong. This kills a Feli I mean, not a Felios. This kills a Felios, but also kills things like Akshan. It actually threatens to kill Nami. Wait, does it? Is Nami a 2-3? Yeah. It's crazy strong. Isn't Maka already too good? This is insane. Because this is actually giving a plus one attack. Two attack is pretty meh these days, but three attack is insane. Wow, what a card, dude. What a card. All right, next. Wrath of Echoes. Wraith of Echoes. Six mana, two, five. Trash stats is an epic. We can pass on. Okay, fine, fine. I'll look at it. Round end. For each ally that died this round. Uh-huh. Grant all allied copies of it everywhere plus one plus one that's really good for sharks that's really good for shark chariots oh no it's not because revived units don't get an everywhere buff do they no they do don't they i think revived units get an everywhere buff holy crap shark chariot because every time you let's say you have two shark chariots every time they attack they get plus two plus two every time they die if you have a three one and a three one they both attack next time you attack they're five threes next time they attack they're seven fives that's crazy. Sand Soldiers. Insane with Sand Soldiers. But uh, it, you have to, like, it's a slow, it's a really, really, really slow card. It doesn't hit effect until mana 7 plus. Because you do this, like, after the turn. So, yeah, this is going to be pretty cool with Azir. It's a round end effect. So this has to survive as well. It's really slow. But there's some really cool things you could do with it. Huh. I'm going to play a lot with this. I'm going to try to figure this out. There's some fun stuff you can do. This looks really fun. Azir Katarina can't play that card. Why? Need for earlier ramp. I mean, I meant Callista, sorry. I meant Callista chat, my bad. Azir Callista, that's what I meant to say. Huh, you, you want to ramp early? Yeah, but like, what do you really... If you're playing Shadow Elves and... I don't know, I don't think you ramp. Maybe. Very cool card. Huh. I wonder what else you could use it with. What's a repeating card that you play a lot of copies of? It's, it's usually, it's because it, here's the thing, the card also has to die consistently, right? It's not a, a, a like, yes, Dragon Links could be a thing I was considering that. Mist Wraiths, you've got only a limited amount of Mist Wraiths, but you could do it with Mist Wraiths. But are you losing two Mist Wraiths the turn you play it? Because you want to lose at least two plus copies of the card when you play this. Otherwise, losing only one, giving that unit one one everywhere is not that great. You want to lose, like, multiple copies. What can you lose multiple copies of? Spiders, Links, maybe... It's something you want to generate for free, though. I think it has to be like Sand Soldiers or Shark Chariots, because those get generated for free every turn. I think it has to be one of the two. And I think the best one is maybe Shark Chariots because you're, you're able to take a region that has Rally, which is kind of cool. Anyway, very cool card. Next card, oh boy. Oh my god, another Gwen support card. Is this going to generate these guys somehow? All right, Opulent Foyer. I think... Three mana alarm marks are usually too slow because they do something the next turn. When I'm summoned or when you gain attack token. Oh my god. It's when I'm summoned as well. Wow, that's not bad. That is such a decent card. That ramps up your um your hollowed by a ma massive amount. Dude, that's crazy. Because it's a when I'm summoned as well. Like, let's say you play this on defense. 
you get a ephemeral blocker, so it doesn't even slow you down that much. It doesn't even slow you. You actually prefer to play this on defense. Great with scouts. Oh my god, it's amazing with scouts. And I've already built um, Quinn Hollowed. And Quinn Hollowed, funny enough, was actually pretty dang good. Because I was using it with Quinn's, uh, Quinn's little eagle. You know, the bird. And it actually felt pretty decent. It was pretty prime removal. It's mid because it ruins harrowing. Forget about harrowing. Um, harrowing is only played in the in the Noxus version. You don't need you don't want you don't even have to play harrowing in the in the Demacia version. Yeah, you play something like Lucian and Gwen or Gwen and like uh, I, I think this is crazy strong with scouts. Because you're you're generating so much pressure. It's so much pressure. Well, you get the attack token, one of these gets summoned, you attack with scout, boom, you, you, you got value. You get another attack token, you get another one of these, like, you're put, that's, an, that's insane. You might even, you might even pair this and play dual landmark, um, and I don't even think it's that bad to pair it with it. Even though you're having two landmarks on board, I don't think it's a big deal to play with Grand Plaza in the same time. That's, that's actually kind of spicy. You play it with Grand Plaza, with scouts... And you're absolutely, no, but nothing can really survive that board state. You're going to be attacking twice every turn with, uh, with like a 10-1 a ephemeral with challenger. Every turn twice. Not to mention your other cards getting value off of Grand Plaza, but that seems pretty nutty. That seems kind of insane to me. That's really decent. I like this card. Even though it's not my play style, I think we might have to... If this becomes a thing, I, I might have to run like some landmark removal early. I don't know. We'll see. It's not too slow because when you play this landmark, let's say you play Grand Plaza first. On mana four, you're by default getting um, a unit out of it that has challenger and removal. 3-1 challenger. And that's assuming no hollow died yet. So you're actually getting value when you place this because it's when I'm summoned as well. This can get three mana worth of value on the turn it's played if there's a Grand Plaza on board because you're getting a 3-1 challenger ephemeral for free. It's pretty good, man. Next card, Swinging Glaive. 3 mana, 2, 1, Trash. Strike, create a lucky find in hand. Akshan support, possibly Faded if you want to play Faded and Shurima. Severe, maybe? Mm, I'm not sure. It doesn't look bad, though. It's, it's yeah, the, the 5-drop, I think the 5-drop might be better than this, though. I think the 5-drop is just better than this overall. I don't know. I'm not really feeling it. I'm really not feeling it. Kaisa, maybe. I don't know, dude. It's good for Pantheon. It's not bad for Pantheon. I don't know. I'm not feeling it. I'm going to say kind of meh. Yeah, kind of meh for me. Maybe I'm wrong. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure about this card. Yeah, I'm going to pass. Two mana Shurima rare. Two, land, two mana landmarks can be very scary depending on the effect. So let's see what this one does. When you slay a unit. Ooh. You know, I like these when you slay a unit. And Shurima is not a bad region for that. Reduce the cost of the next darken unit. Hmm. Well, oh, that might be an Aatrox card. Um, wait, okay, here's a question. Stuff like this. Stop for a second and think about this for a sec, chat. Or more importantly, this actually has slay as a part of it. Listen, to play... To play me kill an ally. This is already a slay card, right? This is slay. If you slay like three units with that landmark on, you can play Terrash for seven mana, for example. Like seriously. It should work for this. You should be able to like ramp these out now. Holy crap. Because this is a great card. Like to play me kill an ally. This is a very good card on its own. It's a slay card. It's a slay generator. All of a sudden, now you can play Terrash on super low mana as long as you lose two mana worth of tempo for this. I think it's max minus one. Why? Why would it be max minus one? When you slay a unit, reduce the cost of your next dark unit you play by one. Okay, so now, it's, now it costs, it's reduced by one. What happens when you slay another unit? It should stack. There's nothing to make me think it, just, it doesn't stack. It should reduce it by one. That's like... um. Uh, that's like this card right here. Reduce the cost of the most expensive unit in your hand by one. This can reduce the same unit by three. It doesn't, it doesn't max out at one. There's no real reason to think why this doesn't. Like, this stacks. 
Why wouldn't that stack? What decks would play this? Um, Kindred or Nasus. Or just Kindred Nasus. Like, it fits really well for that kind of gameplay. If you want to be able to, like, cheat up. But here, I'm, my guess is going to be, and I, this might sound wrong, I will guess that the, the deck that runs this is going to be Kindred and the new um, Darkened Champion we get. I'm thinking we might get, like, a 10 cost 8 trucks or something. If that is the case, it might pair well with Kindred. But yeah, very cool, very cool. Scary, very scary, because now you're able to play like 10 cost units and have mana for... Even if this procs one time, the fear thing is you drop down a... Um, you drop down and Terosh, they play Vengeance, and you play Rite of Negation because he costs 9 mana. That's the really scary part about that. Because right now, it's balanced around the fact that Prime Removal will always, always, always kill Terrash, right? Always. And there's no way to stop it. At best, you can turn into a landmark, but then you, you, they have another turn to kill it. Because you usually play Terrash on attack turns, not on defense turns. So, this costing even 9 is pretty dang scary, because this is game ending. This ends the game. It's next card you play, not reduce the card cost. But it does stack regardless because the Daybreak Dragon Reduction stacks. Well, I know. It's the next Darken card you play, not the next card. So it will be hitting the same one because there's very few Darken units. The only Darken units we have are the weapon ones and these two. And you're, if you're playing that card, you're never going to play this after proccing it once, right? You're just going to keep stacking because you haven't played a Darken. It says the next Darken. It'll reset when you play one, correct? Just like the next Dragon you play. From the seven cause dragon oh it's not a dark okay you're right so it's only kane yeah you're right it's only kane yeah good point it's only kane at the moment and weapon weapon darkens like this so you're just going to be stacking until you play one which is crazy if you're playing something like kindred because kindred is going to proc that every turn sometimes more than once you could literally have in two turns minus four on one of these like imagine you play kindred on um okay think of the scenario Mana 2, you play the landmark. Mana 3, whatever. Mana 4, you drop Kindred. All right? You play, um, let's say, I don't know, 0 mana, kill off a unit, draw Nasus. I don't know. It's, it's just, you can play 0 mana, that plus a Glimpse. You can play that plus a um, turn your unit into a Husk, whatever. There's a lot of, lot of void. 1 mana now, true. That's, that's true. They get nerfed. You know, maybe that's why they nerfed it. Because they nerfed that card and... Um, they nerfed both cards. I, I was thinking of combos to do it on mana 4, and it was Rite of Calling, and it was Hate Spike. Two very common things you do the moment you drop Kindred. And they both got nerfed. Now, maybe that's why they did it. Maybe they found it was way too strong. It was way too easy to stack up way too many um, Slay effects. Because theoretically, by mana 5, with enough 0 cost and 1 cost Slays, and if you have spell mana carried over from mana 3, you were able to, uh, you were able to, like, mana 5 almost play a Darken, like, the Darken 10 drop. But mana 6 for sure. Mana 6 for sure you could play this easily. Like, this could be played on mana 6 super easy. And this on mana 6 is so scary. Like, it's terrifying to play this on mana 6. How do you deal with this on mana 6? As any normal deck. It's a 10-10. And every time it attacks, it fills your board with attackers. That's scary, dude. Vengeance? I mean, sure. Stun, sure, but you still have the deal with it every turn. And what I'm saying is also you can save mana for um, Rite of Negation. If you're, if you're playing versus Shadow Isles, you just save mana for Rite of Negation. If it's a 6 drop, you just wait until you have 10 mana. Turn 7, you drop it. Boom. You have Rite of Negation in hand. And turn 7 is probably going to cost 5 mana to play him. With how many discounts you're gonna get. It's kind of crazy. I think that I think this might be one of the strongest cards now. If it works, if like it doesn't ruin your tempo, and if the right deck is made for it, I think this card could be insane. Because that is a win condition, and you're hyper focusing on making it um cheap. I mean, we I remember there was a tier one deck literally because uh that literally ran Green Glade Lookout to reduce the cost of Hydrovine. Because Hydrovine was so strong, 
Making this cost six or five was game breaking. You drop this on mana five, you win the game. Just one or two reductions in a win condition wins the game quite often. Playing this on seven, it's strong. Playing this on five, you win. Like even in this meta where cards are really powerful, playing a Hydro Vive on mana five is game breaking. It just gives too much value, especially if you're running it along with Ionia where you have Deny or Syncopation to keep it alive. It's game breaking. You just can't remove it easily. And it just tempos out of control on its own. So th this card can literally do the exact same thing at a very cheap cost. And it's better than Green Glade because you're able to choose exactly what you're discounting every single time. It's a lot better than Green Glade in that sense. And you can proc it more than once per turn. And not only more than once per turn, more than once, because Green Glade dies after one strike. This can proc five, six times consistently. And the crazy thing is, if you destroy the altar of the blood, this should remain. The effect should remain. Even if you use landmark removal, the amount of times it procs should not go away. Caught a stream. What's up, Narthen? Hope you're having fun, man. This is a nothing. This card is crazy. What did other streamers say about this card? What did Alan say? It doesn't. If if it wasn't permanent, it would say. Your next Darken costs one less to play for every slate I've seen, or something like that. That would be the wording. That would be the wording. But the wording is when you slay, reduce cost. That's a that's a that's an effect that's already done. So I, I think this is gonna be nutty. It's a maybe for a truck support. I don't know. I disagree with that. I disagree with Sunny. I think this is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Alright. Next. Curse of the tomb. Two minute burst, Sharima. Always scary when you see two minute bursts. Okay, so it has a predict already. More predict support. Uh huh. Give a unit, I take double damage. And if I would die, obliterate means that. Wow. Let me, let me see what this is really quick. Person who doubles damage to 36 if you're a four attack. Iron Ballista is a four curse. Damage double to eight, causing. That's broken. I didn't even consider the overwhelm aspect. That's broken. That's 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 broken. I'm sorry. Just the obliterate part is really strong. That's broken. No, broken beyond belief. It does three amazing things. Predict is very useful. Take double damage is very strong. And obliterate is amazing because you can't revive champions that get obliterated. That's insane. And no, no, like, no death rattles happen or whatever you call them. This card is insane. What? This card is insane. It counters like a large, like, even in, even in the current meta, there are decks that get countered by this. I'm pretty sure. Not just that it's going to win stuff. Akshan Sivir, let me see. Does it counter Akshan Sivir? Um, not particularly. Any Jin, not particularly. Akshan Sivir. That's a lot of Akshan Sivirs. Holy crap. Lee Sin Nami. It's amazing for Lee Sin Nami. Senna Vagar. It's pretty strong versus Senna Vagar because you want to obliterate Vagar as if possible. Um, meh. Katarina Yasuo. Well, you don't play it in Katarina. Does it counter Katarina Yasuo? I don't know. Lee Sin Nami. Talia Ziggs. So what does it counter? Destroys Anivia. Um, pretty good versus Undying to an extent. Uh, really good versus any, any like Kane deck that runs the three mana revive your strongest champion that died uh hurts hurts um unit into rekindler for example but the this yeah the blurry report is decent the take double damage is broken even if lee sin doesn't have overwhelm he's still he's kicking as if he has overwhelm that's kind of funny like imagine no overwhelm lee sin who is a f five attack let's say you have five attack on lee sin that's 20 damage to face isn't it? Wait. Oh my god. No, no, it's 10 damage to face, sorry. It's 10 damage to face. 10. Not Nexus. They just said Nexus takes damage. Didn't, didn't I just read a tweet that says that? Where's the tweet that I just read? I closed it. Doubles the target damage, so if your 4 attack Iron Ballistas hits a cursed 4 health Vanguard, look how the damage is doubled to 8, causing 4 overwhelm, yeah. So it acts as if the unit has 8 attack. That should be the same thing on Lee Sin because, uh, look, he, the Nexus takes damage for how much damage the unit took, isn't it? 
Let me read it. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, the, the, uh, Dragon's Rage. An ally kicks an enemy into the enemy nexus, striking both. Okay, never mind. Never mind. It doesn't work that way for Lee. It's only striking both. Okay, never mind. He just strikes the nexus. So, no, I'm wrong. It's actually not broken for Lee. Now, if Lee has Overwhelm, it will do a lot of damage. If Lee has Overwhelm, but not without Overwhelm. You can also cast Curse twice for four times. You can double... Okay, broken. Yo, Overwhelm decks are going to be absolutely crazy. Uh, I really personally don't care. Because I run a massive amount of stuns and recalls when I play this game. But uh, I want... Yeah, I was going to say something about Karma. <laughs> brother. My brother in Christ. There's a deck called Warlord Karma. <laughs> in before 5,000 damage to face. Because she doubles... She quadruples the damage your Nexus takes. If I have one Overwhelm unit on mana 10 with Karma on board and that card plays once, that's take four times damage, by the way. I'm just saying. That's... that's <laughs> Well, not only that, there are things like, um, like even if I'm playing early game versus like aggro, this heals for four if I play that card. Like, there's so many good things I can do. Yo, that's a big, big karma card, actually. Because uh, Warlord's Karma can really use that as, a, as like a one of. It, like, if you don't have enough buffs to do 20 damage to face, that'll, that'll do it. This quadruples the damage your unit does. Quadruples. Mana 10, you pop this one time on the enemy unit. On the blocker, once they block, quadruples your damage. Times four. If you play two times, uh, times 16, correct. If you play two times, it would be times 16. It's a unit, not Nexus. I'm aware of that. But you do realize if you have Overwhelm, that's how much damage the unit is taking. Let's say I have a 10 attack Overwhelm Karma, which is very small. Because usually when I swing on mana 10 with Karma Warlords, she's hitting for about 16 minimum. So if Karma is swinging with 16 Overwhelm damage, I wait for blockers. They block Karma. I cast this twice. That unit takes 16 times as much damage as it should. That means it's 16 times 16. What is 16 times 16? 256. That's 256 damage the unit is taking. If it has 10 HP, well, 246 go to Nexus. Because that's the overwhelm effect. Whatever damage was dealt to the unit that goes over its HP, is, it spills over to Nexus. How does it go to Nexus? Because you're hitting the unit for 200 plus damage. That's how much damage the unit is taking. And Overwhelm, what it does is it spill over. Is that literally how it works? That's literally... Damn it, I just closed it. That's literally what we just read on, on, on Twitter. Yes. All right, crazy card. Crazy card in aggro. You can meme with Wild Claw. No, for sure. You play Wild Claw into this. That's a 14 attack Overwhelm unit. If you play Battle Fury plus this, that's 16 damage to Nexus. I mean, it's it's really strong and overwhelming. Forget about Karma. Like, sure, it's it's strong in Karma, but that's just like a, a like an extra, right? This is this is nuts. I can see myself playing this in control decks because you I, I run lifesteal often. Getting double value from lifesteal healing for double the amount is spicy. I have the timestamp for Alan reading the Dark in Landmark. Alright, give it to me. Alright, this is the last one. Last card. 7 mana, 5, 3, absolute trash stats, but it's not an epic, so it's probably good. It has Fearsome, which is kind of stupid, but it has Evolve, which makes it a 7, 5. Play, I strike an... Huh. 7, 5. 7, 5, Fearsome, I strike an enemy. It's expensive, but it's 7 mana removal with a body. That's pretty good. I'm going I'm to call this pretty decent. It might be a little bit slow, but it's not bad at all. As twice as long as the damage unit is alive. After that, the damage of Nexus is calculated normally. No, that's not how it works. It's not how it works. Damage to Nexus is not calculated off of the unit attacking the Nexus. It's calculated from spillover damage from how much damage a unit took. For example, um, here, 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 here's an example. How does Lux's uh, beam work? It has um, Overwhelm. What is it? It inflicts damage beyond what would kill the targets to the Nexus. It calculates how much damage the target took, and anything over that is Delta Nexus. Excess damage. That's how, that's how Overwhelm works. That's why as a spell, this does damage to Nexus. It's not striking. This is not a strike effect. Nexus doesn't take strike. Nexus calculates off of. 
um, spillover. It calculates how much damage the unit took. I think this is the only overwhelm spell, but yeah. It's a spillover effect. Remember Etherfiend? Yeah, but Etherfiend has many requirements. This doesn't. There's an overwhelm spell in Noxus too, I think. Is there? Maybe. But yeah. Um, I think this is okay. I think it's playable. I don't think it's a good card. I think it's a playable card. As, but it's only playable, I think, in, um, in these decks. 7-5-3 sucks, but 7-7-5 seven, seven, strike for 7 is solid. Because they're not striking each other, right? This is not a single combat. This is a one-way strike. It's pretty decent removal. It's a little bit slow. It's a little bit slow, but it's, uh, it's, 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 it's high value. Alan has, some, has had some very weird takes in his life, but maybe he's going to have a good one of this. I believe in Alan. Let's, let's hear him. This works with the... This works with the weapons. Okay. It's good. There it is. The problem is spend two mana. Like, when are you going to get this payoff? Pretty fast. You pay two mana and the payoff is so late. It's not and that if late. If you draw it late game, it's unplayable. That is true. If you do draw it late game... Yeah, I mean... If you draw it late game, it is unplayable. That is true. That is a decent point. I didn't think of that. Um, if you do draw this late game, it's a, it's, a, it's a dead top deck. But then again, you do have a massive amount of draw in um, Kindred decks that maybe it doesn't matter too much. On paper, it looks nice, but you need to guarantee... Like, this needs to cost one mana. How do you draw it early game? Yeah, you do have to kind of draw it early game. But I think maybe you run it as a one of... First of all, to be playable even. Umana is for me unplayable. I disagree. If this like if this set started in your hand, it would be one of the best cards in the game. Run three off? You never run you run zero off. Okay. Mana is too much. One mana would be playable. I don't think the mana cost is a factor. Imagine the ruination to what? You can predict for it, that's true. Okay, that's something. But you need to ruination your own board. Like you literally need to ruination like three or of your own units. That's not true. You don't have to ruination. You just play in a Kindred deck. Kindred is slaying every single turn almost. Anyway, let's move on. All right, all right. Cool stuff. I mean, he's not necessarily wrong. He might be correct. I really do think he's going to be strong. But he makes a very good point that it is kind of a dead card if you don't draw it early. So, that, that, that is a point I didn't consider. Like, it, it is dead if you draw it late game. Well, it's not necessarily dead, but it's really, really bad. It's underwhelming. Still, even if you draw it late game, there is something to be said about, um... About even getting one proc off of it to make this cost 9, to have Terrorush plus Rite of Negation. 9 mana Terrorush is very scary. Like, even if you draw it like mana 10, you play that, and then next year you can play Terrorist plus right. That, that is a win condition that you didn't have before. Talk about patch when you're an overwhelmed streamer. True. What are your opinions on the 2-5? I joined late and didn't see it. Um, I I talked about it a little bit. Basically, that um, it looks like a lot of fun, and you probably have to play with either uh, Sand Soldiers or Shark Chariots, because you need something that constantly generates um, units. You could possibly play with Mist um, from Diego, uh, but how often do you have, like, two plus encroaching mists very rarely right you rarely have two of these dying in the same turn compared to one like it's usually one dying you, you have to have like an invasive hydrovine plus a viego on board plus and if you already have all that it's, it's just a win more at that point and it only buffs the encroaching mist it doesn't buff the viego so yeah i think rotations are good at the end of the day if you have multiple the same landmark wouldn't yeah if you have multiple the landmark you can like super accelerate your darkens which is kind of interesting too but yeah, very cool, very cool. And it's not even slay your own unit, right, is it? It's slay any unit, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's slay any unit. When you slay a unit, yeah, so it's it's enemy units too. Like, if you're playing, like, Vile Feast, it still gets value, right? And, and when, when you attack and they block and you trade, it still gets value. Like, it gets value very, very fast. It can make your weapons super, super powerful. Like, okay... Actually, yeah, it's even better than I thought, because, like, let's say you play Kindred into, um, into Glimpse. You're slaying two units, because you are slaying the enemy unit, right? Actually, do you, does that count as a slay? Does Kindred's effect count as a slay? 
Yeah, kill kill Eunice with my mark. So yeah, it is a slay. That's pretty nuts. Kindred of that card is actually crazy good. Eight mana Terra Rush. Yeah, one hate spike is eight mana Terra Rush. Correct. One hate spike. Because you've slayed two units. Uh, yeah, that's. I, I think it's going to be very strong. Spamble Darkin, five mana Zolani, six mana Terra is just too much. It is a lot. We're, we'll see what happens though. I mean, I play Karma, so it's all about getting to mana 10. Can I get to mana 10? That's the question. If I can't get to mana 10, oh well, it is what it is. We got some really strong control cards though coming in. The PNZ ones are insane. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, a Demacian weapon, two mana, one, one, and tough. It's not bad. Tough is use useful in a lot of Demacian cards, like Fiora, for example, likes this. You may spend five mana to play me as a Yorala. Your opponent spells... That's not bad. That's not bad at all. It's a very annoying card. It gets palmed before attacking, that's fine. Absolutely fine. Keep in mind, you guys forget one big thing. Do you guys know what open attack is? On your opponent's turn, you play Yorala. What now? You have an amazing open. What if you play this into Jarvan? Real quick, tell me what happens. You play your Rowl on turn five and you open attack turn six into Jarvan being pulled. What do they do? What combat tricks can you possibly play now? Eight mana vengeance. You can't get Jarvan. Why? You open attack. So while attacking, it's attacking. This is amazing for open attacks. And even if you don't open attack, um, one of the most important things in Rune Terra is combat tricks. Why do they call it combat tricks? Because you save a lot of your spells for combat, during combat, after declaring blockers. This makes it very awkward to play combat tricks. You have to play them before combat, which means the opponent has the advantage in trading better than you do. If you can make your opponent play their combat tricks before combat happens, then you have the advantage because you get to use your combat tricks and he has none left. This is a really cool card. I think you guys are underestimating this. This is a scary card. It has challenger, so it's not bad versus uh, things like um, aggro to an extent. It has tough. It's a really good blocker. Um, it's good versus misfortune, for example. Things like Noxian Fervors, for example, cost five if you if you challenge something like this is this is solid. Um, versus other decks like Nami, for example, you challenge her and pull Nami, or whatever. Like, you do realize it's going to be very expensive to stop this. Remembrance buff, maybe. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. Seven mana Telstones. It would cost nine mana to play the, the Recall Telstone. 3 mana to use the 1 mana one, and then um, 6 mana to recall. So that's 9 mana instead of 5. Uh, this is this is solid. Remembrance can't summon this. Um, can it not? No, I don't think so. This is a token. This isn't a collectible card. But yeah, this is, this is very cool. I like this card. I think you guys underestimate it. I think I would play this in some decks. It's good with Fiora. Giving Fiora tough and stats is always amazing. For 2 mana, that's actually solid stuff. I don't mind this at all. Plus one plus one and tough on, on certain characters is decent. Uh, I would play this in Demacia. I really would. I'd play this on Garen, for example. I really think this is decent on Garen as well. How do, how, what do you do with Garen usually? I'm curious if you guys know. Garen, you always attack with him, but you're usually afraid to attack with Garen because he doesn't have enough stats to survive with combat tricks being accounted for. Like even if he's a five and your opponent has a four attack blocker, opponents can like buff their four attack blockers by enough to kill Garen. Well, now you can attack with Garen freely because you're not afraid of combat tricks. They're too expensive to play. I like this. I think this is very solid. And the fact that this is not a spell is a big deal. Why, you may ask? Because it goes really well with the other discount card where spells cost one more. What's the card called? Uh, Petrocyte, whatever his name is. That's actually kind of crazy that you can play this as a non-spell. It'll never be more expensive in Petrocyte decks, whatever the guy's name is. Stony Suppressor, thank you. Not, not Petrocyte, Stony Suppressor. So this, this goes really well along with that entire um, shtick, right, of making spells more expensive. I actually wanted to build a Stony Suppressor deck for the expansion, um, mostly because I think there's going to be a lot of people taking advantage of new decks to climb with uh, Nami. And I think Stony Suppressor might be good in the early um, start. 
just to take advantage of all the because we have you seen the have you guys seen the other released cards? There is a ton of spells, two mana cost spells all over the place. Another thing is Stony Suppressor literally destroys Seraphim. Because <laughs> Seraphim depends on two mana cost spells. And if they cost three, yo, that's gonna be a sad day for Seraphim. That'll be a sad day for Seraphim if her two cost spells cost three. So I'm looking forward to making Stony Suppressor decks. I've already considered it um beforehand and this goes really well into that kind of deck because you don't want to play spells and this is a non-spell that gives you stats and buffs and whatever and this is amazing along with it really really cool card i like it next oh they put spatula into the oh they put spatula into my deck what is this <clears throat> ekathian myths create an ekathian mirage in hand that costs zero this round or Create a golden spatula in hand. That's really good. Straight trash? How's that trash? Two mana, three, two, when you need it. Equipment when you need it. Why is that trash? Four mana, three, two. Only if you need it. Like, this, isn't this useful in some scenarios? Let me think. Am I crazy to think this is useful in some scenarios? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Actually, are you right? Is Chat correct about this? It's definitely playable. Because 2 minus 3, 2 is just sol solid stats overall. It's not bad stats. Wait, he's a weapon master? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Why is he a weapon master? Oh, he came from the Jack expansion? I see. It's the 1 mana spell. I mean, I, th I think this is an okay card. I don't really know where this Golden Spatula fits in. Where would I play Golden Spatula? I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Next card, Rune Squire. I think it's pretty okay. I mean, it's not a bad card. It's a, yeah, it, it's, it's a versatility card. Rune Squire, two mana, two, one, Challenger when I'm summoned, Reforge. Reforge, huh? Another Reforge card. So wait, this becomes a... Wait, what? Wait, wait a second. Re what, what is Reforge? I'm confusing Reforge with um the other thing. Reforge is plus one plus one, right? No, it's, it's Riven. It's the Riven one that gives me the Riven piece. I'm, I'm confusing it with uh, Forge. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, all right. So um, isn't this a little bit expensive? I feel like the 3-1. I know it has Challenger, but do you really want Challenger? In a Riven deck. Do you really care enough? Challenger is huge for Riven decks. Oh, because of Quick Attack. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I can see it. I can see that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, pretty solid. That is true. Because you can play Quick Attack or you can play Plus Attack and uh, get really good value for it. Yeah, that, that, that is true. I agree with you. I agree with you. 3 mana, 4, 1 Challenger, exactly. Okay. Worse versus Fearsome. Worse as an aggro card, but... More versatility. Yeah, I can get behind this. Quite solid. Yeah. It's the best two cost. No, is it playable? Very, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Sure. You can play both. Better on attack and the other is better on defense. Sure. Yeah, solid card. I'll give it that. You'll definitely see play in River Next. I agree now that I think about it a bit better. Quick attack is really good on it. Plus attack is good. Overwhelm, obviously not. Brutal Skirmish, 3 mana fast Noxus. Alright, what, what do I think this does? Let me let me look. What the hell is that? Wait, what, 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 is, what is happening here? What is that? This reminds me like when Han Solo was frozen into like the thing. I, I can't even start to guess what this does without reading it. Is that like a reflection on somebody's really big cleaver? And did it cut this sword in half? Brutal Skirmish. I, I'm going to guess this is Noxus's um, Quietus, where it, it can destroy a weapon or um, equipment, and it has something really good because it's three mana. Is it going to be an or or an and? What if it's a your unit strike, like your unit strikes an enemy with an equipment? Stop cheating. I'm not peeking. I'm not peeking. I didn't peek, chat. I didn't peek. I okay. Listen, I promise you, I didn't peek. 
Just read it now. Destroy an enemy's equipment. An ally and that enemy strike each other. I was really close. No, but I... Oh my god. I almost got it perfect. I almost got it perfect. I thought it was going to be an ore. <sighs> Listen, I'll, I'll explain to you how I knew this was a thing. They didn't like... The last p reveals, we got a, um, didn't we get another Quietus from another region? Which was the one that we got? What was it? There was another one, the Freljord one, or the Ionia one. I forget which one we got. The reason I figured this was the Destroy Equipment card is the following. There's literally an armor piece being broken, a, a weapon being broken. Literally, look, look at the image. It is a weapon piece being broken. And we had just received from a different region a weapon destruction. I assumed this is going to be weapon destruction. And then I think to myself, well, what can three mana do? Comparing Quietus is one mana to destroy equipment. This is two mana more expensive. I got to think of an effect for three mana. You guys are papayas. You guys are absolutely papayas if you don't think you can you can like get that out of this image. Stop it. They're literally releasing almost for every region equipment destruction. And this is the most expensive one, or maybe not as expensive. I forgot what the Ionia one is. No, you cheated. And listen, you guys are just, you guys are salty. You can get as salty as you want. <sighs> Could have been destroy all enemy equipments. No, that would be a, a really weird card. And in Noxus, even where doesn't make sense. Noxus is more about like aggro and strength. Taking 10 hours to milk what the spell could do. This is, so here's the question. This, this is a broken card in some interpretations and kind of may in others. But um, it depends how this works. What if, if you have no ally, you can't destroy equipment? Are you forced to strike each other? Like, like it depends how this interacts. Let's say you have a, um, you have, a, for argument's sake, you're playing Nora Noxus for some reason. You have a Nora on your board, and the enemy has a gigantic equipment unit. Are you forced to sacrifice your Nora in order to destroy the equipment? Like, if, if, if you have the option to attack, are you forced to attack? Like, how, how does the selection process go? How do you select? Also, what if it, what if you want a single combat on an enemy that doesn't have equipment? Does this actually die? Is this a dead card? Probably not. I think you can use this as single combat. I think this can be done as a normal single combat without needing to um, remove equipment. And then this is the bonus that if it has equipment. But I'm not sure if you can use this just to destroy equipment. I have a feeling that if you have an ally on board, you might be forced to attack. And that possibly, if you don't have an ally on board, you can just play this without the ally. I don't know. Um, if you can choose, like, any way you wanted, this card is absolutely insane. If you're forced to attack if you have an ally, I'm not so sure how insane it is. You can skip it. The question is, can you skip? If you can skip, this card is so strong. It's pretty spicy. Either way, I think this card is very good. Um, it's going to see a lot of play, I think. All right. And last card, I think, right? All right, let's, let's try to guess what this does. I'm going to read the name. I'm going to read, okay, Burst Legionary Charge. Let me, let me, I, I think this is going to be Summon uh, Attacking Unit. Something with Legionnaire. Two mana Summon, a, summon a Attacking Legion Rearguard. Or two mana Summon a Legion Rearguard. It doesn't have to be attacking. Because that, that makes the most sense. If you can Summon a Burst Speed Legionnaire, it can't block. And it would never summon a 2 mana cost or It's one of these two. It's one of these two summon. I think it's a burst speed summon. I think I think it's a little bit too strong for Noxus to summon a burst speed blocker. I think I think it fits this. Legion rear guard, burst speed summon. I'm gonna go with that. Final answer. Because it's two mana. It can't be anything else. Draw an ally with five plus power or grow an ally to five power this round. Holy crap. We got another tutor card. That's insane. We got another tutor card, dude. And this is one of the strongest tutor cards I've ever seen in my life. This is, uh, this is so cool. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything broken with that card at the moment, but let's look at champions first of all. They can be tutored out of this. We can tutor Nocturne. We can tutor Rumble. Rumble's already in that region, so that's really, really cool. And tutoring Rumble is not bad at all. Tutoring Severe is really interesting and solid because Severe is a win condition on her own. Uh, what other tutors do we have? Tutor Gangplank? Nah, I don't think so. Tutor Udir? Not horrible. Tutor Vladimir? He's dead. Um, 
Yeah, tutor means to draw a specific card into your hand. I'm trying to think of what card is absolutely broken with that. Um, what, what card you really, really need in your hand. I'm not sure. Like, the Leviathan is not bad. That's actually kind of okay. Leviathan is kind of solid in a Swain deck. And Swain's pretty strong at the moment. Swain is really solid at the moment. Uh, let me think. Grow an ally to 5 power this round. How good is that in Swain decks? Well, if you're playing Swain TF, for example, that's pretty solid as well. Like, uh, TF getting 5 of power with Quick Attack is really cool. Antiquitus, true as well. It is a Quietus counter, absolutely. But yeah, I think that's really good for Swain's boat. Like, really, really good. <laughs> you know what we could do? Like, funny enough, you could actually use that on cards like Braum. Uh, to um, kill stuff. You could. You could use it on Braum. Like, Braum all of a sudden having 5 attack for that turn is a really good removal. Now, uh, the question remains... And that actually, that stops the one thing that really kills Braum as well. Quietus kind of kills Braum, doesn't it? Like, imagine you play Braum, they play Quietus. You put him to 5 attack and then you attack and kill. Like, the value of that play is actually insane. That is some hyper giga value. You drop Braum, they play Quietus, you buff him to 5 attack, they cry, you remove their uh, Vagar. GG, well played. No, it's, it's GG, well played, brother. Nox is Brum, who cares? Let my dream be a reality. Stop it. It just looks fun to me. Overall, cool card. And, yeah, this is nothing to, to laugh at. Grown Ally at 5 power this round is solid. It's really good versus Ash, if Ash ever becomes a thing. Um, yeah, I like it. I like this card. Brum Nox is just self-damage. Yeah, could be. Karma. Only when Karma levels. You have to have played a leveled up Karma, right? That's a thing. And Karma doesn't want to play Noxus. I've tried Karma Noxus so many times. I actually played Karma, Karma Reputation. Um, it's a fun deck to play. There is an OTK you can do with Karma Reputation. It's just hard to pull off. Preliard. Anyway, that is the last card. We are done with the reactions for today. Wait. Oh, no. <laughs> the shirtless streams. I had no shame, chat. I had no shame, I'm telling you. I was shameless in my in my growth years where I needed to grow viewership. Oh my goodness, the greatest player to ever miss allegiance is true. I still have no shame. That's not true. That's actually untrue.